everyone. Welcome. You've tuned into the Monica Brandt Show, and I am your host, Monica Brandt. I am so excited about my guest this evening. She is a superstar in multiple industries. She's a WWE Hall of Fame, eight-time WWE champion. She was one of wrestling's biggest superstars. She is a fitness icon, one of the original fitness modeling icons. She has over a hundred covers. She's a cover model. She is a wife and a mother of two, and she is one of my longtime friends. So please tune in and have your ears open wide for all the greatness, Miss Trish Stratus. your career has expanded into is just remarkable. I mean, not that, you know, you don't doubt, but it's just cool when I think back of, yeah. you know, doing photo shoots and kind of showing up at different appearances with you. And here you are like years later with this tremendous career. And of course, I can't wait to dive into all of the different pieces of it. <laughs> well, I mean, it is cool to look back at like, you know, like where well, there's just in this brand new industry and we're just doing this fitness thing that's just brand new and no one else is doing it yet. And then we were able to then parlay it into, you know, success and what we're doing today and still continuing, you know, spreading the same message. So it's kind of cool to see that, you know, but kind of like, where are they now kind of a thing where you look back at some of the girls, yes. and, you know, kind of see where everyone landed. It's kind of cool. I agree. I like that. The where are they now? <laughs> and, you know, really, that's what this whole show has been about for me. Um, back when COVID kind of hit the world and everyone was in kind of this lockdown mode and we're all stuck at home. Um, I decided I wanted to have some conversations with people from the industry and find out what are the people doing? You know, how is everyone handling the lockdown? What's going on in their world? So this is really what my show stemmed from. And instead of just, you know, calling, I'm like, well, let's make this fun. Cause I know there's a lot of fans out there and people that have admired the industry for a long time and used it for their own inspiration. So it's been a really fun uh, treat, I guess, for me. Um, as well as it's uh, broadened my um, me because usually I'm the one being interviewed as opposed to the interviewee. So I've had to really kind of figure out how to do that host part. And um, it's I feel like evolve. And we also we want to do is constantly evolve. And, and, you know, we we get these challenges and to kind of like do something that you're sort of uncom uncomfortable with or unfamiliar with. And then just to get into something is is always a good thing. Absolutely. So let's kind of let's kind of go back to 2020 and 2021, obviously now. But what has this? Yeah. What was 2020 like for you guys? And into now, you know, I know you're up in Canada. So uh, what is that? What was the year like for you last year? It was actually a nice break. <laughs> you know, people, <laughs> honestly, people talk about the reset that happened. And for me personally, like, I mean, you have to be careful to say it was a great year. It certainly was not. There was a lot of terrible things that happened over the, in the world, of course. Um, but for me personally, um, I tried to basically, you know, take uh, lemons and turn it into lemonade and kind of look at it like, what uh, what can what can we do with this time? And, and because time is so precious nowadays, uh, when you go, 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 um, and when you have a family, kids when they say, you know, like, oh, they, they won't, they're not going to be like, it goes by so fast and they'll not be this young ever again. And it's so true. It goes by so fast. So gosh, I felt so blessed this year to be able to just be with them. You know, um, it started off, let's see. So in March of last year, we were, we had actually taken a, a spring break trip. We had gone to Florida. Um, and we, you know, it was funny before we left, we'd heard like the buzz, like kind of like, oh, and people were calling who other people who were families who were leaving. They were saying, are you actually going to go take this trip? Because a lot of people were saying not to go. And I was like, we need to, we had dealt, dealt with a lot of stuff. My aunt had just passed away. We had a really heavy um, month. And so we just, we needed a change of pace and change of environment for the kids and everything. <clears throat> so we decided to take the trip. Uh, we headed down south. And, um, you know, I remember us being by the pool and being like, look, kind of looking at our phones, like, ooh, school's not coming back. And then, ooh. And then, you know, I remember that I think the famous turning point for a lot of people was um, when the NBA 
when the NBA canceled the the season, people were like, oh, "Okay, this is this is serious. The, the, some stuff's going to happen now." Right. <clears throat> we um, were talking to our family back in Toronto, and everyone was it was freezing. There was no one around. No one can go anywhere. And so I was just like, and I'm looking out the window at the kids' pool, in 90 degrees weather. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> we basically stayed in Florida as long as um, the government, like they weren't allowing Canadians to get insured anymore. So until the insurance was being cut off, we decided to head back to Canada, but we did not want to go with this max exodus of people leaving the States to head to Canada. So we decided to take an impromptu road trip with five people and two toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy. I probably would never do it on paper, but it was <laughs> like such a great time, you know, like just to be in that experience and try the hotels and be on the road with the kids. It was amazing. We had such a great time with them. And then we came back and it was, um, yeah, it was homeschooling. So we did homeschooling for those few months and then we had the summer and then we went back to homeschooling. So it's been, I, I, I've loved it. I love homeschooling. I love coming up with crafts and activities and I'm a very crafty person. So like being like, I find like little agendas for my family to do, which is kind of cute. <laughs> so it's been nice. And like, honestly, I feel like I've been going at you. The, I'm sure you're the same. I think we've been going for two decades for 20 years straight. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of nice to like, not have to, okay. Number one it was nice to like, not have something, no travel coming up or some project coming up. And Two, I was for the first time ever. I got to like sit and watch Netflix and have a bag of chips if I want to, because there's nothing like, on the horizon coming up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm eating like a normal person. You know, <laughs> so that was fun. I just it was just a complete different pace, and uh, I really, I really enjoyed it. It was great. It was good. Well, it's awesome. Turn back and maybe get back to getting on the road again, though. Yeah. Cool. Now it's like okay, let's go back now and do a little okay. bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was fun and all. I, you know, I agree. I think there's uh, every. I'll just say this: everyone that I've spoken to, and this is so. Now the show's been going on um, a year this month. I think I'm right around a year. So yeah. um, everyone I've spoken to, and it's usually one show a week, has had that same kind of concept that you said. You know, turning lemons into lemonade, making the best of it. Like, I, you know, and for so many times you hear people kind of critique our fitness and bodybuilding industry like there's a lot of negativity or there's you know a lot of down and negative stuff about the people but honestly like i feel like everyone has you know really stood out and said no this is this has been a great opportunity to reconnect to mm -hmm. kind of dive into some new things or take that yeah. break like they needed or you know do something in their home yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Much, so, much, so much interior designing has happened in the home, which is great, too. There's never time to do stuff like that. So, yeah, no, it is it is nice to see people kind of like, you know, looking at it as a positive. I mean, finding let's put it this way, finding the silver linings is what. Yeah. yeah. And maybe that's what makes people, you know, I guess everyone I've spoken to has, you know, had a tremendous career from the industry and been able to extend the industry for them, or it's has been, you know, like you, they've kind of gone into another area of, of their career, which has been, you know, successful too. So it could be that the type of people, you know, are all successful and all have that positive and all have that kind of ambition to make the most of whatever it is. So, yeah, yeah for sure. That's awesome. And you get to spend that time with your kids and make, some really cool memories. And just like you said, like, I bet you could probably have written a, a very cool journal about your travel, you know, being in Florida and then traveling back, like you said, and, you know, have something journal for your kids when they're older. <laughs> I've never taken that trip. I always said, no, you know what? They're too young. 19 hours in the car is ridiculous. We're not going to throw ourselves in a van. We can't, just, we're not going to do that to them. But it's like, it was such a positive. It was a wonderful and such an experience. And especially someone who's been on the road for 20 years as well. It was nice to do it with them and experience the hotel life with them. And yeah. it was, it was it's exciting. Kids always think that, you know, a lot of kids think that the hotels are exciting, right? They're like, mm, of course. Oh my hotel. God. <laughs> on the bed and like, you know, seeing the pools. Well, not that those were open, but yeah. you know, like seeing this new place that was their home for the, for the yeah. day or whatever was kind of cool. <laughs> So let's go back a little bit, um, you know, and I, I definitely want to obviously go back to kind of how you were raised and where you were raised, because I don't really know a lot about that. So I'd like to know, you know, take take me and the viewers back to Trish as a, you know, a teenager and in your, you know, into your 20s. Who were you and where? how were you raised? Well, um, I grew up in a neighborhood south of Toronto, surrounding around Toronto, in a suburb in Toronto. And um, I have a sister who was uh, 11 months younger than me. So it was the two of us and um, very heavily influenced by my mom, her fitness and her yoga 
was a big thing in her life. So that was, you know, over um, transferred over to me. Um, I remember doing like, I remember she put on these old school yoga records and she'd prop up like the, the back of the record and for the pose guide on the back. So I have like very <laughs> memories of like my first, you know, namaste moments with my mom. So, and then she was a runner. So I would try and do, I, she would take me on. She would do her run. I remember she would take her, do her run and then she'd go, okay. And she'd kind of have like a, a little route on the end that I would get to take. And I was like, she's like, I gotta do my own stuff first, kid, you know? <laughs> no, no, <that's laughs> like, Let me do my real workout and then I'll do one with you. And then I would run with her. So I kind of got into the fitness from that. Um, I was a soccer athlete. I played, um, I played up until I was 21 years old. So I was pretty high level, uh, rep level soccer. So that was um, what I played for um, many years. And then I was, a, I played for my varsity team. I played field hockey in university. Wow. So always a jock, always into sports, always doing it. Um, never had done any bodybuilding or anything like that. It wasn't until our world opened up where I was actually, um, my, after my, my uh, York University, which I attended in, in Toronto, went on strike. The professors went on strike. And we were just waiting for school to come back in session. And during that time, I, I decided to like take a job. So they let me find a job that makes sense for me. So I decided to go to a gym so that I could train for free. I was like smart, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I worked at this gym and I was working at the front desk. And then um, a gentleman came in and basically told me about Bob Kennedy. And he said, you know, he's starting this fitness line. And it was for, um, what was it called? Hyper, what was it? Do you remember? Are you talking about the supplement line? No, it was actually the clothing line they oh, did. Oh, yeah, I do remember yeah. that. But I, yeah, I'm spacing on the name right now, but I know what you're talking about. I, something. I remember that. So um, he said, you know, we were looking for models. And I was like, oh, I, like I've never modeled. And I was really like, a, like I was a total tomboy. The idea of modeling was like so girly girl to me. And you know, like, <laughs> to, um, yeah, I was just not up my alley. And and because I was, um, I was a pre-med student, so I was biology, kinesiology, and my goal was to go to med school. So like to do extracurricular stuff that didn't, add towards my journey of my med school journey it didn't make sense to me so i never really pursued anything like that i remember even i got asked to be in miss teen canada but it didn't make sense it was like not on my path i was like mm, it's kind of like not part of my journey right now right i'll just go be the candy striper at the hospital instead <laughs> <laughs> hey they had calendars too you know yeah you know what I didn't need actually <laughs> I, was, I think i've done a calendar in a nurse's uniform before but anyway that's a different story <laughs> um so yeah, then um, he basically said, I'd like you to, I'll bring you to, as you know, Oxygen Muscle Mag was headquartered just north of Toronto. It was literally like about maybe 20 minutes from where I lived. So um, I got the chance to first meet Robert Kennedy. So I went in, met Robert Kennedy and he's like, great. He goes, let me, do you have any pictures? Like, can we, you know, have you done any work? I was like, oh, um, this is me and my mom. Like, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> so um, he said, okay, well, let's, um, let's do a test shoot. He introduced me to uh, Jan Tana for the first mm -hmm. time. Gave me up, went down to that because Muscle Mag headquarters was, if you remember, the offices were on the top, and downstairs was the the, the store that they had, the Muscle Mag store. Mm -hmm. And so he took me downstairs. He got me a couple bikinis off the rack, and he got me my Jantana and this that crazy sponge brush. And I was like, okay, go slap that on, and we'll see you in a couple of days. And I was like, okay. <laughs> what what year was that? Oh my gosh, I was in 1997, probably, or okay. maybe 96, maybe 96. By the okay. time. And so then I was at home um, looking through magazines and I was, um, and by the way, I was looking at magazines before this started. I was looking at Monica, you were looking at you. I was looking at Amy Fadley and I was looking at Marla Duncan. And those were the ones I was looking at. I was like looking at the pose. I was like, how do I get that? that okay, okay, there it is, you know? <laughs> it's like this kid like posing in front of my mirror it was so funny. And yeah, then I went to my first shoot and um, I don't know, I don't wanna say nailed it, but you know. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> you had the twist already down, and you had the glutes. And the body. It's funny because they talk about Tara Banks as she says smizing. I'm telling you, Bob has been saying smizing for like way before Tyra for sure. Like he used to say, "Your he goes, you got to smile with your eyes." He didn't call it smizing, so Tyra had coined that for sure. But he would say, "Smile with your eyes," and that was like the main thing. He would always say, "There's so much in the eyes," and and that was like a really important thing for him. He used to um, kind of work with us to get there if you remember and so yeah that was my first shot uh um, test shoot and then from there he said okay well i think let's work on this he goes um so he gave me um a trainer he assigned a trainer to me introduced me to um scott abel do you remember that name scott mm -hmm. abel yeah yes i do yeah. And then um, basically I ate something trained for three months and it was crazy because like, as I said, with my, I was so, I'm always very hyper-focused in everything I do. And so for me to go into med school, 
That's why I didn't look at anything that wasn't related to the, the path of going to med school. So uh, this happened at a time where I swear, like the universe, like, I'm just going to put this on hold so you can see if this is what is for you. I mean, I would have never been able to eat, sleep and train like that. As you know, the, the schedule is so crazy and eating every three hours and training every day and maybe twice a day um, <laughs> with my university schedule it would have been too crazy. Um, and so everything was on hold. So basically during, as my professor's on hold, I'm here cultivating a, a little fitness modeling uh, career. <laughs> <laughs> little, yeah. There was a point where, boom, I got, I went to my first shoot. He took me down to South Beach, Miami. Mm. I did a shoot with, uh, it was with Corey Nadine. And I can't remember the other one who was with us. There was another girl who, who wasn't really a fitness girl. She was more sort of a, like a skinnier model looking girl. Mm. Very beautiful girl. I can't remember her name now. But I remember Corey Nadine because she was kind of, old. she was like kind of the eight girl at the time, kind of all over the place. Very yeah. sexy. I'm, I'm almost like, I'm like, oh, that's, oh, that's very racy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Very racy. laughs> Yep. So beautiful and, and uh, <clears throat> it was cool to kind of watch them do their work as well so then I had to do my first photo shoot and uh, and you know as you probably went on those trips too he'd do the South Beach Miami trip and there was that little breakfast spot that he always used to like and he'd show us Versace's house and it was like <laughs> a cool trip. Um, and then yeah that was my very first shoot turned into my first cover he um, he sort of sat with me and, and and contracted me so I was kind of part of the muscle make team at that point um, and so, you know, I, um, I suddenly had a fitness modeling career, um, university came back into session and I was suddenly, you know, starting to do these appearances and photo shoots. And I was trying to juggle the two things, you know, trying to do school and trying to do that. I couldn't do both. And it just basically, my, I, it was actually my, my boyfriend at the time, but he's my husband, Ron. Um, he said to me, um, Wait, I'm sorry, say that again. Your um, husband is now, is your husband. Yeah. I mean, your husband was your boyfriend back then. Yeah. Yeah. So Ron oh, y'all have been together a long time. Eight years next month. Okay, we'll come back and talk about that. Finish your thoughts because I do want to. I wanted to talk to you about your yeah. relationship. So yeah, so Ron said he goes, I don't know. I feel like you should just like you. I think I was twenty two at the time or something. He said you should just like. When are you going to be twenty two again? I mean, you know, you can always go back to university. This is like this is your time. And I was like, all right, let's do it. So I had his support and mom was on board as well. And so yeah, I just uh, we decided to move forward with it. And so I kind of like became a full time fitness model for a couple of years and. That was when we met. That was the beginning of uh, our friendship back in the day. Oh my gosh. Okay. That is so awesome. Just like hearing the transition and I'm picturing myself in those years, right? Cause I, I think my first fitness competition was in 91 and then my first cover came to 94 with muscle fitness. And then of course I was introduced right away to Robert Kennedy in 95. The first year I kind of got into and was, remember Jim, do you remember Jim Amettler? Oh yes. So Jim brought me my first year in 95 to the, um, is it 95? Oh gosh, I'm spacing on it now. Yeah, it had to have been 95 to the Arnold Classic. And he oh, shot wow. me with Marla Duncan and, you know, the whole mm -hmm. bodybuilder. Remember, he used to go and he'd have the room set up. And I actually, he flew me out there so that he could shoot me. And it was just like this, or maybe that was 96. That might have been 96. Um, but anyways, it's just like I'm picturing all of these memories from there of my own. And then, you know, just hearing like where yours were, because you were that same timing, right? It just, you were Canadian and I was US and we yeah. kind of met, you know, would see each other here or there. And then it was like, you're off doing your thing and I was off doing my thing. But, you know, we were there. Ah, <laughs> yeah, cool. I love that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> super fun, super fun. I mean, it's so fun to just think back on all of this and, you know, we were the originals, really. I know. I know. And you know, I did an, uh, um, an article once and I'm reading it back. Someone, and I, I guess I should pull it for you to, to show you, but they they called us like, they they made us like the equivalent of like, you think of the supermodels back in the day where you had Cindy Crawford and, mm -hmm. and Campbell and those gals who were like the supermodels because it was a brand new thing. They were like, there was models and then there was the supermodels, right? And for us, there actually wasn't any models. There was literally... Yeah. Uh, just us the handful of us yeah, just were, there was a handful you're right you know it was a brand new industry if you think about it I remember because um working at the gym and getting into fitness and bodybuilding started doing my own little bodybuilding at that time look at the magazines there really wasn't any body types that I felt I could relate to I was like oh that's too big I don't know if I could get there like it didn't mm -hmm. I liked an athletic body because I knew I had an athletic body and I could relate to that but it was just obviously not quite achievable for the average person and then, you know, starting to see your body and then seeing Marla and then seeing Amy. And I was like, okay, that now I can relate to that. And I think that's achievable. Um, and then just in being able to like, you know, even studying biology, kinesiology. So like taking the theory I learned in school and then applying it to my body was so fascinating to me to be like, I literally can build a superhero in body. Like it felt like I was like, 
<laughs> right? V-taper, right? Bob would always talk about the V taper, you know, get yeah. that V taper girl, get that tiny waist, you know, and yes. working on the lats and things like that. But like watching your body change into this thing, you know, and just having control of your body was so amazing. And then watching this, this industry just beginning, just percolating. And then mm-hmm. you know, Bob really, remember he coined the term like fitness model. He, he said yeah. this a fit body that's a sort of a little more relatable and achievable. Um, and, you know, people could now walk, like look at this and actually have a goals and, and say, I can, I can do this. Um, and it was, and, and it's a lifestyle too. And it was a lifestyle that we were, we were portraying and it was mm-hmm. just such a special time. Like we were so lucky to be the beginning when it was just like a few of us doing our thing and all those shoots ground together and all those opportunities and, and autograph signings and covers and oh my gosh, so amazing. He really, he really did a lot for our industry, right? Like, I mean, because up to that point was just the female bodybuilders. And, you know, he had a vision. And, you know, I know some of the other little uh, magazines, some of the other magazines kind of pulled us in here and there. But, you know, Bob really had such a heart for it. And he really did a lot to help all of us, too. Because I remember the first time I met Bob, um, I want to say it was the, it had to have been the I had to have been 95, 90, maybe it was 96. I'm just basing on which year it was. But it it seems like there was a show in, and I wanted, I thought it was the Olympia, but it was in um it was in uh and maybe it wasn't the Olympia, but I and maybe I was, but it was oh gosh, it was a big show. And he had brought me in and he bought me eight by tens yeah. uh, from Alex Ardenti. Right. I should ask Alex what year that was if I he can remember. Because he he made two eight by tens for me to sign, and he set me up in a booth, and I don't remember if there was anyone else there, maybe a female, a male bodybuilder, and maybe it was um, a different show, but I want to say it was there in L.A., and I I feel like I was the only one there, maybe, and he had kind of told me you know what to wear, and he had these eight by tens for me to sell and sign, and he had pens for me, and it was kind of my first real. Job. I want to say real opportunity to do yeah. that and to, you know, have someone help me. So, yeah. well, I he, remember like him, him telling me like, he's like, okay, like, and I was lucky. He literally lived 20 minutes from me. So we would, yeah. I would, he became my mentor. Like even after when I started wrestling, I'd go see him at least once a month we'd have for lunch. And, um, and he would just be like, you know, he would just encourage me and I'd show him he didn't get the whole wrestling thing or the yoga thing. When I did the yoga thing, he was like, Mm, I just don't get it. <laughs> and it was funny because I actually had to, um, I did a photo shoot with Oxygen Magazine and actually he walked in as I was doing a yoga sequence and doing like a handstand or a headstand or something. And he was like watching you in your body move and like the mechanics of your body goes, I understand. I understand and I like it. And that's when he put me on the cover for to to introduce yoga into Oxygen Magazine. And it became like sort of a thing, but he was like, mm, I'm not, he thought it was all granola crunchy and you know, that kind right. of thing. He hadn't been exposed to it yeah. with, with someone like you. Yeah. <laughs> and he was so old school bodybuilder, right? So old school for sure. Like chicken, yeah. broccoli, chicken, broccoli done. That's your, that's all. <laughs> right. Yeah. I Bob, Bob, I he, he sat me down one day and he's like, okay. And he, I remember he showed me this magazine and it, it was inside the magazine. It had a full page ad. As you know, we did, we all had these, these big full page ads with our eight by tens. He took the pictures from the photo shoots and stuck them on there. And then he's like, he told me, go get a P well, it was obviously before, but go get a PO box. Mm-hmm. So I got my first PO box. I registered my business in, you know, 1999 was the first time I registered officially Stratus Enterprises with an official business. And then I went into business and, and he taught me how to be an entrepreneur. I learned how to, you know, manage money how to do my own bookings, do my own marketing. Um, and it's just like, he gave me so many tools that like I still use today. Like there's a lot of the things that I must, you know, so this, and then and to be honest, I still have a database of people that we still send, you know, my current merchandise to, and they're still buying from me. These are my fans for 20 years from my fitness days. Wow. And it's unbelievable. And that's all thanks to Bob sort of introduced me to that world and knowing mm-hmm. that it was like, when you do this, you know, you can do these things. Um, and, you know, and also just telling me, like, I realized, like, like when he showed me that, I thought, wow, he's giving us these opportunity to be in a magazine, which is cool. But like, what can we do with it? Can we like, can we do more with it? And A, okay, yes, we can be on, be an entrepreneur. We can do that kind of, there's that avenue. Uh, but also we have a voice now, right? Like I thought, oh gosh, I'm on the cover of a magazine. Let me use my voice now. And so then I would, I would call contact some of these sports shows in, in Toronto that luckily were airing across Canada, but, um, and you know, one of them was off the record 
that's how my segue happened into uh, wrestling actually was, you know, he had said, to, I remember him saying, he's like, I'm so proud of you. Cause I was like, so I booked myself on this show and he's like, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. And he, he loved that we were like taking this thing that he got, gave us, but doing stuff with it and really like turning it into like something that could be sustainable for a long time. Right. So um, yeah, off the record was one of the first sports shows I appeared oh, on. Wow. And then from there, the fan, the fans from wrestling, like kind of like there was like that crossover and, and we can get into that story in a second. But um, that was like my that was basically the turning point for me to go into the, the world of wrestling at that point. We would talk about and this sport was, was it was about it was a sports show. So they liked having this chick who was that was like their go to guest when they could have a chick on who spoke about sports. Which OK. Was, like, oh, you spoke about like all sports. Yeah. So we talk about sports. It was generally a sports show, but we talk about issues and politics and stuff that was in. The wow. Sport. OK. So, yeah, I became the go-to as like a chick who knew sports, which is, you know, not as common. Was that just on air or was it also visual too? Um, what do you mean? Was it audio and visual or was it just audio? Yeah, it was a TV show. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it was a TV show. But then the wow. TV show had a really great relationship with the WWE. So like they would have wrestlers on. And so they would be, you know, and it was one of the main like sports shows, I guess, across Canada. So as can uh, the Canadian talent or the show was hosting in, in Toronto, they would have the talent on, you know, just to, to be a part of the show, part of their media tour, things like that, promoting the, the events and things. So I remember I was on a show once with a, with a wrestler. And then the big turning point for me was, um, so WWE um, was announcing that they were going to be primetime because you used to watch wrestling. It would be on at like 11 o'clock at night. I remember it was like late night kind of thing. Like, like, ah. <laughs> Right. Um, so they now had made a deal with WWE that they were going to be airing at prime time, nine o'clock at night. So they had a big press conference in front of the Sky Dome and they were announcing it. And so part of the thing, because I have a relationship with wrestlers and a huge like wrestling uh, following, um, is they had a press conference in front of the Sky Dome. So they had this big press conference and they were doing the show live from there. They had the press conference before, then they followed up with the show and they had live, live um, uh, some of the talent on. So I was on that particular show. And um, I remember just like, there was this one question. Now, Sable was the big woman in the WWE at the time. And they had this thing, the question was, okay guys, who's your favorite woman in wrestling? And and the crowd starts going, you, you. And, ah! and I look at the footage and my face is going like, you could see me just like, kind of like, oh my God, they're talking about me. That <laughs> you want to try to be cool. And I was like, and so I, I, I'm, I acknowledge it. Like, I'm like me, I'm not even in wrestling. Like I had to acknowledge it. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I watched it back now. It's so silly. Um, but being on that show, um, that like, there was like an exposure to the wrestling world. And then following that night, I went to the actual wrestling show. I actually attended that. I made myself a Stone Cold Steve Austin 316 shirt and I oh, wow. to meet a couple wrestlers. Um, cause the, cause it's off the record show introduced me to some so mm -hmm. that was like a big turning point but from that show so internet was just starting to buzz right mm -hmm. we were to yep. see <clears throat> fitness galleries and things like that so we that's how we became famous i guess because we'd be in the magazine suddenly or we're there so you we, i take i live in toronto but i go to florida and like people knew me because they were following me on the internet or they you know that was part of our i guess rise would be for sure the beginning of the internet Absolutely. well we were all over airports and grocery yeah. stores everywhere yeah, right like it was yeah gas stations yeah. like yeah <laughs> In the mail for people. For sure. So then, um, so the internet uh, was also for wrestling. It was a big, you know, wrestling. There was group chats and things like that. And so, so there was a report that was Trish Stratus, a fitness model, was spotted at the event and has signed a contract and will debut soon. So <gasps> here I am going, run, come here, read this. Oh my gosh. And I'm reading this thing. I'm like, that's so cool. And so then I'm seeing like these galleries of wrestling women and they would suddenly be putting my pictures in there, like taking my fitness pictures. And I was like, Oh my God. But I'm like, nobody's calling me. It's not like this is official. This is not a real thing at all. Oh, so it hadn't, it hadn't actually been established at that point. It was just a rumor. Like, <laughs> so in the meantime, I thought to myself, you know what though, if they call, I would like to prepare the best possible package for them. I want it like, so Bob gave me this. He said like when I did my first photo shoot um, and, he, and he gave me my contract after my first photo shoot, mm -hmm. he said, he said, you know, he says preparedness meets opportunity. He says, that's a motto. Like that's why you got this contract. And so it's something I live by. Like, it, you know, we can get these opportunities. Um, you know, number one, you need to be aware to recognize the opportunities. And, and then prepare for them. If you're not prepared for these opportunities, you're not going to be able to maximize them, right? And really take advantage of them. And, and uh, so, um, so for him, you know, knowing like I'm going to give you a photo shoot, for me to like prepare and do the everything from the tan red bikini to the posing practice or whatever it took, that was my preparing to make sure I could maximize this opportunity and coming in totally tight and trained and everything dialed in, dialed in and everything. Um, and so for this thing, I thought, okay, well, if there's this rumor, I don't know if someone calls me, I don't want to be like 
I love wrestling. Yay, pick me. <laughs> well, I found this gym in Toronto called Sully's Gym. And it was one of the wrestlers, one of the Canadian wrestlers I knew he had trained out of there. So I'm like, ooh. So I look it up. I go down there and I show up at the door. I'm like, hi, I'd like to wrestle. And he was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he All said right. that, like, he'll say it to this day. He was like, oh, look at this cute little blonde. Thinks she could be like a, like an eyepiece, or eye candy on, in this, on, the sh- on the show. And then I was like, oh, no, I want to like wrestle. And then he put me right in the ring. And I trained in this like Rocky Balboa style. And it wasn't a wrestling ring, which has a bit of give. It was a, a boxing ring. Uh, it was no give. Right. And I trained with the boys. And I was like me. And I was the only girl in there. And I, I was very clear. And I was like, don't treat me like a girl. Just I'm just an opponent. Like, treat me as your counterpart. And that's it. And uh, I trained my butt off with them, with them. And I learned to got a good foundation to wrestle. And when they did call me finally, um, they flew me. I remember they flew me into Connecticut, which is Stanford, Connecticut. It's like their main headquarters. They picked me up in a limousine. And I mean, listen, as a wrestling fan, there's a guy with like the WWE sign. I'm like, with my name on it. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> like, so crazy. I'm in the limousine by myself. Just like, oh my God, what is happening? This is my pinch me moments, right? I'm in the WWE headquarters. There's like Hulk Hogan, The Rock, The Undertaker, all these posters. Not them. <laughs> God, I would die. But the, but the posters everywhere, you know? And I'm just like, oh my God, like, how am I, how did I get here? So I sit down with Jim Ross, who was the head of the talent relations at the time. And he said, you know, it is a very physical job. There may be times where you may have to get involved. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, I've been training for about three months now. And I think it was like a little check where he's like, oh, noted. <laughs> <laughs> noted. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I, I went home and then uh, next thing you know, I got a FedEx package with a contract offer. And that was my that was my transition. So at that point, that was in 1999. So I'd been doing fitness modeling for about three years at that point. And had and so and don't forget like so there's one other thing I'd add is the funny thing about having the fitness background is like when um, they finally like they had called because um, I met someone at one of these TV tapings I had met somebody and he said send your package to us then if you've been training and everything yeah send it to us so I made my own like press kit like I took all my covers took a little piece I'm sure you did the same thing right and took these little pieces of your article and and it's pretty impressive because like you're like twenty something years old and you've got this like portfolio of like because we were on like every single cover at the time because we were the go-to girls. It was crazy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I sent that and then that was kind of part of my thing. So then when I debuted, it was like, that's Trish Stratus, the fitness model. And that was it. It was uh, in 2000 that I finally debuted. So that was the transition. It's crazy. Were you, were you the original, um, the first woman to kind of transition, not just be eye candy, but actually have that role? Um, yeah, so, um, well, I was initially brought in. They wanted. I was eye candy in the beginning. <laughs> I was a valet, which they uh-huh. called me the men. valet. That's what the word I was looking yeah. for. So I was brought in for that. Um, there, there was some women wrestlers, but like there was China at the time. I she, remember China. Yeah, but she was sort of like all her own. She did. There was no women's division. She was the woman, and she she fought against the men, and she became women's champion. But she was, you know, she was a separate entity, kind of all on her own. Um, and actually, um, so when I was brought in, like I, I knew I could do more physically. And I, 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 so when I was at ballet, I was very physical in my role. I got thrown over the top rope and I got like all kinds of things happened. Choke slam from nine feet down, like, like crazy things that like, I was like up for it and willing to do it, but I knew I could do more. Like I knew, and like the guy, like we have, um, agents and producers that work with us behind the scenes between each, uh, for each, like you get your segment kind of thing. And he knew, he kind of said, he, he saw like the fire in my eye, his name was Fit Finley. And he saw the fire in my eye and he was like, he's like, oh, okay, let's, and I felt like, like, because no one's really paying attention to the girls, let's do like other stuff besides the girly slappy stuff. Let's do like cool things that like maybe would kind of pique, pique people's interest. Um, and then there was actually a, tra- a turning point when China actually was the woman's champion. She left the company and did not to return. And she took the title with her. So there was, it was vacant. There was literally... There was no division. So like as a female, you're like, I, I don't even have anywhere to compete to become a champion or to do, there's no chance for me to do this. Um, and so then um, they had, they decided in 2001, I think it was, they decided to have, they called the six, six pack challenge. And they got basically a handful of women that the, the only women in the company that could work, there was only six of us that were actually wrestlers. And I was an underdog at the time. I was very new and I, cause I hadn't had to actually perform. I'd learned it, but to actually perform is a whole different thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, then at that, that was the, the first match they had that were bringing back the woman's title and they decided they were going to have a new focus on the woman's title. And that was when I became champion for the first time. So they basically like g- gave me the ball, literally like, we're going to build a women's division here. And I'm like, okay, uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> They wanted to build it around you. Well, that's what happened. But, but yeah. So really- how cool is that, that you were in two massive industries separate in the very beginning? Have you, 
considered I, that too? <laughs> like, no, it's so crazy. Like I just say, when I say timing is everything, like I really, it really is like for me anyway, my career was like being in at the beginning and that's why we were so blown up was because it was this new thing that was only a handful of us doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and then in wrestling too, there was only a handful of women doing it. There was only six of us in the whole company that were like able to even do it out there. And, and at the time there was one spot on the card. Now there's more spots on the card. There's more women's wrestling. We definitely, the, 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 the tone has changed, put it that way. But back in the day, we were lucky to have a match on the card. And so, you know, we, um, I decided and with Fit Finley, he was the, my agent, like I said, he basically said, you know, you can do this. And he goes, we, he goes, he goes, you don't need to fight like a girl. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to do slaps. And it was like a hair pulling and slaps. And I was yeah, like, no. oh, cause I know I can do, I know I can punch and I know I can kick and I know I can do a thing off the top rope and I know I can, obviously, <laughs> you know? And so we did. And, and I set out to like, I said, let's change the perception of what a female can do in the wrestling world. And so that's what sort of my mission was. <clears throat> and slowly, but surely we got more time. And then it took a while, like, cause fans were used to cheering, like, there was a time, Monica, where one of the most popular chants when the woman came out was puppies. They would cheer for puppies. What do you think the puppies were? Boobs. Yes. Boobs. Were my boobs. Boobs, Monica. At one boobs. point, that was my big, my big move was my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> puppies, puppies, the whole thing. And it was, oh my God. Then when I started to work more, I was like, okay, we're going to we're going to change that. We're going to change that. And so slowly but surely we had to almost re-educate the fans and let them know like, <laughs> you're talking about a bunch of boys. Yeah, no, no, but we did though, Monica, we, we got, we had the chance to like, say, you know, if we go out there and actually have like a legit match and not pull each other's hair and slap and do stuff that like you can, that would make the boobies look sexy, sexy. You know what I mean? <laughs> we were like fighting. And so if we went out and fought a match, would people care? Would they notice? And they did. They started to notice. And it took a while because they were still chanting puppies. And I was like, I just did a really like kick ass move. And what did you, you're not even, you didn't even see it, you know, but uh, <laughs> over time we get, we had that. And so we'd have more workers that were able to put on great matches. We had the storylines were written for the females and giving us characters and storylines and integrating us into the, the show. So now at this point, like the women are now responsible on their own for like this portion of the show, as opposed to just being part of the guys, part of the show. You know mm. what I mean? So suddenly it did start to shift and we started to see a shift in the female demographic. There was more females starting to watch and to come out to the point where they were like, oh, we need to create a female merchandise line. So they would, you know, cater to the female fans now. And now, I mean, if, if you, I mean, back in the day you'd hear about like, even when I was into wrestling, nobody else liked wrestling. Like I would talk to a wrestler, you're like, oh, you like wrestling too? Like it was like a big thing because no other, no females like wrestling. And you would not see in the crowd, you would not see barely any females except for the odd, the odd, you know, maybe girl that girlfriend that got dragged <laughs> to the scene the show right yeah right <laughs> but then over the over time we started to see because now there was things like just like when we saw the fitness model coming out and there was more of a relatable figure and like then bob that made oxygen magazine and people like it was a thing a movement and so suddenly in wrestling it was a thing the females were starting to become part of the show and then becoming you know people were looking up to them and the talent there was like that's my favorite part of the show was was the females and um and it was really cool to be a part of that you know and that was like part of my work i could say in the beginning is what we took it from like this eye candy thing to like and, and i don't say my work i mean me and the girls there was like probably about, like i said a handful of us that just like there was a, back in our day but there was a handful of us that were out there determined to change the perception of what a woman could do in the ring and it was a really good time and, and if you look at what women are doing now let's just say we 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 did it <laughs> absolutely hey guys if you've enjoyed the monica brain show don't forget to subscribe ring that bell and if you have any ideas or suggestions for the show comment below and i'm happy to get back to you